folks, Bill here with Whirlybird Video Productions coming at you with more from the beginner series on helicopters. Today we're going to get a little bit of the meat of the actual setup of the helicopter. So we're going to talk about something that uh, a lot of the folks when I help them get started with helicopters they found it very confusing, very intimidating uh, and that's pitch curves and throttle curves. So today we're talking about pitch curves and throttle curves. Uh, we'll talk about throttle curves first and then we'll talk about pitch curves and what those are. So we'll uh, take a look at the radio I was standing around. We're actually not going to set up in the radio. I'm just going to explain it and then kind of show you on the helicopter as I move the sticks what it's doing. Uh, so we'll come around to the front of the helicopter, get that uh, in frame, and we'll show you a few things about pitch curves and throttle curves. Okay, folks, hopefully the sound's not too bad. It's really cold outside right now, so I got my AC or my heat pump running so it keeps coming on and off so please ignore that on the uh, video for the audio hopefully we can get by with trying to get away without trying to cancel all the background noise because I got loggers going on next door so you're going to hear heavy equipment going so at any rate let's talk about throttle curves and I've got uh, stuff to get out of the way that really doesn't pertain to throttle curves right now at the moment so, uh, so this is my N5C helicopter, and I'm flying this on my DX-18. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my 18 on, set it over there. And normally, once I get that set up, I'm actually going to flip into hold, which I have on this switch here. So that's a, you know, a safety thing is we always want to be in hold when we're starting up our helicopter. Uh, we're not going to start this nitro helicopter, uh, so it doesn't really matter. But um, if it were electric, we surely want to be in hold when we start it up. Now this particular, the way I have this one set up, and there it goes, it's uh, initialized. And notice I didn't do anything there. I waited till the uh, fly bar of the system did its initialization. And I'm moving around, so hopefully my sound isn't going too crazy. But you can see right now I'm in normal mode. So this is my uh, carburetor. Uh, so this is gonna operate to my pitch. I'm in normal flight mode. So you can see as I give it throttle, it's opening the carburetor. This is the same way on electrics. Uh, I wanted to show you on the nitro just because there's something mechanically moving. It makes it a little easier to explain. So um, if this were electric, you know, doing that, you wouldn't see a mechanical, but the speed control would actually be going the throttle up. You can see it's working my pitch, but we'll talk about pitch curves next. So we're just talking about throttle curves. So as you can see, if I go fully down, it's at an idle right there, so my particular helicopter is going to be idling. If this were an electric, then it would be doing absolutely nothing. If I turn my hold switch on, if I get my right hold switch, um, you can see that that doesn't do anything. So right there is in hold. Now what it would be doing with this one was it'd be at an idle. So it would be at a little bit high idle, but really not where the blades are going to do much engage as far as the clutch. With an electric in hold, you're going to go to zero. So if you actually looked in your, your hold on your throttle curves, you'd actually see a hold at zero. The line would go at zero. Right now, what I did is I found my high idle kind of where I wanted it, and I actually set my hold switch so it would hold the uh, throttle a little bit about a high idle. And you can see right there it is as a low idle. That's at a high idle. So you can see that moving just a little. So that's my hold. So that's my first throttle curve, right? That's a hold. While I'm in hold, it doesn't do anything. It works the pitch, but my throttle isn't moving. So if I were going up to do an auto rotation, and I flipped in hold, then I would be working the pitch and flying the helicopter, and this is just going to hold it at a high idle enough to where the clutch really isn't engaging, and I could do my auto rotation. It's also for safety sake, if I'm going to carry it out to the field, once I've got it started running, I'm going to flip in the hold, grab the helicopter, carry it out, set it down, come back, flip out a hold, and start spooling up the helicopter manually, uh, is how I like to do my nitro helicopters. My electric helicopters, I fly Castle Creation, if, if I can possibly get away with having a Castle, that's what I end up getting. I just, I'm used to it, using the Castle Link software, so I really like the Castle Creation stuff. Uh, and in Castle Creation, I'll actually flip into hold, move my stick to zero, and then this button here is where I keep my, my idle ups, or my throttle curves. And this is also connected to my pitch curves. So one switch operates normal, idle one, and idle two. 
So I, if I were electric, I'd actually set it up, go to the center, go ahead and flip into idle up one, flip out a hold, and the castle will spool up nice and slow, come up, and I'm holding that zero pitch right there, so the helicopter's not going to take off. It's going to spool up well, and that's just kind of how I like to do my electric. The gas, I'll actually flip out a hold and then uh, ease the throttle up myself till I get to about half throttle. Then I'll usually reach up, go into idle one, and I'll start going up. So what's different about it, right? So if I go into idle one or idle two, so if I'm at zero pitch and I go into idle one, you'll notice it moves a little bit. That's because I figured out that my hovering throttle is about right there. A little, little less maybe, but pretty close. So when I increase pitch, you know, it's going to start flying, but it also increases the throttle. Now, I have a governor on this too, so the governor's trying to do its job right now too, so it's, it may be off just a little. So you can use a governor, you can use a throttle curve. I like to use both together. So I set up my throttle curve to where I like to fly, and I make sure I fly it a few times on idle one and idle two. Make sure it's flying good, getting the head speed I kind of want. And then I'll set my governor up, and my governor will try to maintain my head speed all the time. Because that's what you want. You want a constant head speed, and then you're going to operate the pitch. And then fly the helicopter. So as you can see, if I go, if I go pitch up, and I'm in an idle one, you can see it's advancing the throttle. Now if I come down here, again I'm in idle one, and I start flying negative pitch, you can see it's giving it throttle again. So that enables you to fly upside down, right? So if you're, you're right side up and you flip over and you go into negative pitch, you don't want the motor to slow down. You want to speed up because you're flying upside down. So that's where your idle up comes in. If I go into normal, see right here. So that's, I'm all the way full negative. It's providing full throttle right there trying to get my head speed up. If I flip into normal, watch it. It went to an idle. So that's where your normal mode and then the idle mode, you can see it's coming. I've got it programmed to where it tries to come up and throttle slowly so it doesn't strip your gears. But at any rate, so that's your, that's your throttle curve. And you can see if I operate it, you can see it's operating that throttle. And it's not really coming back to an idle whether I go here or not. And if I go to two, you really won't see much difference right there uh, looking at it. But uh, what my governor set up to do in idle one is to keep this head speed, you know, sorry about that, it's my beeper on my, my timer, is it set up to keep this head speed at, I have to go into the radio and look again, uh, around 1800 RPM, I think. At any rate, you, you set your head speed, right? So you, you go into the governor and you set your head speed at 1800 RPM on idle one. On idle two, you say you set it to 2000. And I'm giving you an example. It's a swag, right? So at any rate, uh, once you've got your head speed, your governor set up, that's your throttle curve. So your throttle curve is going to operate whatever curve you tell it to operate as when you're in idle one so that it provides throttle in positive and negative pitch. Because if you're in, you're, you're, you're in normal flight mode and you flip upside down and you go negative, well, your engine just went to idle. I've done that a few times, accidentally be upside down figure that out luckily had enough head speed to flip over and start flying again so that is throttle curve so now let's talk about pitch curve so in pitch curve we're talking about still going into idle up and idle one this is how our pitch reacts to the throttle stick movement so this is you know our collective stick we're in an airplane this is just your throttle and with a helicopter working your throttle curve and your pitch curve. In a governor mode, so operate in a governor mode in electric or gas. When you flip this on, I like to have my governor on. I can I can use another switch and actually turn my governor on and off, but I've just got it so that my governor comes on in my idle one and idle two. So when I'm up in flight and I flip into idle one, my governor maintains my head speed, and then I worry about the pitch curve. Uh, so all we're, I'm going to do is work my pitch through that curve and I'll be able to fly upside down, right side up, provide more power, less power, go faster, what, what have you, with my pitch while my governor's taking care of my head speed. So let me show you with a uh, digital meter on here what the pitch curve looks like on this particular helicopter. 
and they're all going to be different, right? So it's all dependent upon what uh, what helicopter you have, size helicopter you have, and how that helicopter's set up to operate. And I don't fly the most aggressive pitch curve in the world. Uh, you know, I've got a friend of mine, uh, Chester. You guys have seen him on a couple videos. He flies with probably 14 degrees of positive and negative pitch. He really likes to hear that uh, blade uh, pop noise. So let me get this on here and refocus the camera, make sure that this is in uh, frame here. I'm going to set my radio in normal mode and I'm setting it, the, uh, hopefully you can see this, setting this stick to zero. So this would be zero pitch right here, or I should be dang close to zero pitch. So this thing comes on. Uh, and you need to zero it. And uh, I'm looking at my blade. I'm just looking at my lead. I'm, really looks to me that is zero. So I'm pretty good. It's showing 1.7. So I'm just going to zero that. And that will zero my pitch. Now this, you know, we used to use a mechanical gauge that you had to get down, look at fly bar. And it wasn't near as accurate, I guess, as this thing. So I really, I pay attention to what's in front of the, the period, really. So right now we're at 0, 0, 0. 0.0. I don't really worry about this point too much unless it's really close to, you know, being into a positive or negative number. So I'm in normal right now. And if I operate in normal, I'll have uh, negative 12 degrees, almost 13. And that's probably a little too much, but uh, 13 degrees positive and negative. So that's, that's quite a bit normal, but I'm really not punching it that much. So I'm going to flip into my first idle up. So my first idle up is now going to bring my head speed to what we used a while ago, 1800 RPM. And it's going to hold it there. And then I'm going to work the pitch positive and negatively. And you can see I've got 13.4. I've got the same. So I've got the linear pitch set the same. A little less on the negative. And that's idle one and idle two. So I have the same linear pitch curve on normal as I do idle up one and idle up two. Now some folks like to set normal, and I used to do this, and I just don't do it anymore. But I used to set on a normal, I used to set my negative to where I was somewhere around four degrees to six degrees of negative in normal. This makes it so that when you land in normal mode, it's a little softer on the bottom end because you have less negative pitch. So controlling the descent in a normal mode to land is a little bit easier. But that kind of gets you out of use of using a linear, full linear pitch curve when you start doing sport and 3D aerobatics. So I like to use a straight linear curve. So that's the same on the top as it is the bottom. And it may vary, you know, one de degree there we're talking about. It's not even that, really. But uh, it's uh, close enough so that that feels really linear to you. And that's in one and two. So working this one switch, again, is working my throttle curves, my pitch curve, and my governor. So I've set to idle one. My head speed right now would be 1,800 RPM, or it's going to try its best to keep it at 1,800 RPM while I fly the helicopter both positive and negative. So that allows you to have negative pitch and throttle. It's really pretty simple and a lot of guys talk about it really fast and it gets confusing, right? Um, but it's really simple. You're operating, you know, once you get that thing over your head about the throttle being operated by the radio and not this stick. But again, my governor's really taking over from this. My governor's set up in the V-bar so that when I flip that switch, it's going to try to pull that head speed up to 2,000 RPM or 1,800, whichever I have that set. And again, all helicopters are different depending on what size and uh, how aggressive you fly your helicopter. If you're a beginner, you know, you probably want to set positive and negative 10 degrees is probably plenty on a 600 size helicopter. But if you really want to bank and yank and have a lot more 
control, you know, more pitches control. So that's when you start getting into your Sport 3D, Sport and 3D airbag. So folks, I hope that helps. It's it's really complicated. If, you, if you're having trouble with pitch curves and throttle curves, hopefully that helps. Um, again, it's really complicated at first. Then after you do it a while, you start spitting out numbers, pitch curves and throttle curves, just like they're milliamps and charge rates, right? Um, so at any rate, hopefully that helped. Uh, get out there and, and uh, set your helicopter up and have some fun. It's fixing to be spring here soon. I can't wait. It's been too cold all winter. So yeah, I'm really ready to get out there and start the 2014 flying season. In fact, I've already booked uh, and paid for the registration for Joe Nall this year. So uh, you guys need to prepare. It's coming soon in May. Uh, we're going down on the 9th and staying all the way to the 17th. So uh, Whirly Bird Video will be there all week plus um, uh, get some great video footage having a great time we hope to see you guys there and if you see us out and about run by talk to us hopefully you can tell us you like the show hopefully you can give us some ideas of what you'd like to see next um, comment down below if you have any questions on pitch curves all curves or other types of setup we'll definitely talk about them uh, and that's the best way for me to share is talking about it and talking about it and the stuff that you need to know. So if I'm sitting here talking with you face to face, it's real easy for you to ask me a question and for me to tell you if I know the answer or not. Uh, and I've messed with helicopters a pretty good while, so I could probably pretty much give you a pretty good answer on how to set it up. I've set up everything from, you know, the, the, the SmackDown 3D helicopter stuff to the scale stuff. So I've done everything. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and helicopters are definitely, again, one of the most challenging RC vehicles to fly uh, but it's also one of the most rewarding I think to be able to fly one of these things and they're really a, a crowd to pleaser when people are watching so we'll see you next time on Whirly Bird Video Productions please give me a big thumbs up rate and subscribe we need to try to get the subscription rates up we're doing really good but please tell all your friends uh, we need to grow about 10 times the amount of subscribers we got right now to really make a lot of uh, industries look at us and go, hey, these guys are doing a good job on reviews. Let's uh, send them some products to do reviews. And that's what we want to do, right? If I had the ability to get more products, I could do more reviews for you. Um, so let's grow in 2014. We'll see you out at the flying site. Hope to see you at Joe and all. Uh, take care. See you later.